let's imagine there are five soldiers, and when they're on duty, they're supposed to line up in a certain order. Rook, knight, bishop, queen, king. But it's kind of a hot day, and there's nobody around to kill. So instead, they're all just kind of over here, mixed up, chilling out. You know, queen, king, over here. King's like, how you doing? Um, bishop doesn't get into any of that stuff, because there are no pawns around. Um, but they're lounging around when all of a sudden someone yells, the general is coming, line up for inspection. So they rush quickly over to the line, but they don't take the time to line up in the right order because the general is coming immediately. And so here he is. Uh, this is evidently Napoleon's army. And he looks at the soldiers and he shouts, you idiots, every single one of you is in the wrong spot. And what I want to do with this video is look at what's the probability of that happening. That is, if you take all the possible lineups of these pieces, what's the probability that if you pick one of those lineups at random, all of them will be in the wrong spot? And so to do that, we need to count the total number of lineups and then count the number of lineups where all of them are in the wrong spots. So we'll start by counting the total number of lineups. That's the easy part. Uh, you probably know the answer already. And um, the king, say, goes first. He can go in any spot that he wants. Five choices, maybe this one. And the queen has four choices available because the king's already taken one. So she can maybe go here. That would be one possibility, but there are 20 of them. Um, five for the king, and then for each of the fi king's five choices, four more for the queen. The bishop comes next. He can choose any of three. So now we have 60, 20 times three. The knight can choose any of two. It gives us 120, and the rook is stuck here. Um, still 120. Now, this is not one of those arrangements I was talking about because... The bishop and the rook are both in the right spots. If I switch them, then they would be in the wrong spots. And when everybody is in the wrong spot like this, it's called a derangement, which is a pretty cool name because it's deranged, messed up, but it's also an arrangement. And basically, I just want to find the person who came up with that name and just shower them with kisses. Actually not. That would be kind of awkward. I just imagine myself sitting in the police station the officer sighs and says, okay, let's go over this again. Why did you exhume a corpse and start kissing it? Because these things have been around for a while. Uh, I think they were first counted in the 18th century, actually. Um, but the difficulty with it is that we can't just follow the same procedure. The king comes first. He now has four choices because he can't go in his own square because everyone needs to be in the wrong spot. So maybe he goes here. The queen comes next. The way I have it set up, the queen has three choices. Because there are four squares, but she can't go in her own. Right? So you might think four times three is twelve. Twelve ways the king and queen can go. No, actually there's thirteen. Because if the king had gone in the queen's square, then instead of three choices, the queen would have had four choices available. Right? So there's thirteen. Um, now if I go to the next guy, it gets more and more difficult. And I want to solve a more general problem. You see, the difficulty with, with that method is that um, when I'm looking at a certain guy, it depends where the guys before him have chosen how many choices he has. Whereas when we were just counting the total number of permutations, um, when two people had gone, it didn't matter where they went. The third person had three choices, and the fourth person had two choices, etc. Okay, so we will start with the king. Uh, we'll just consider him the first guy and say he has to go somewhere. He has four choices. Let's say he goes just as an example where the knight should be. Well, then who should I analyze next? I should analyze the knight next, because the knight is the one who's special. He's been picked out by the fact that the king chose to go there. The problem is symmetric with respect to the bishop, rook, uh, and queen, but the knight, um, not so much. So the knight goes next, and he has two distinct choices. There are four places he can go, but he has two distinct choices to make. One is he can go where the king goes. Or, and the other is, he can go in any of the other three spots where the rook, bishop, or queen should go. The reason those are two separate categories is if he goes where the king goes, and the two pieces that have been placed take each other's spots. If he goes somewhere else, then the knight is taking the spot of somebody who's still being held in reserve, and um, therefore that's a different situation. But if the knight goes in the queen's versus the bishop's spot, those are not so different, because the queen and the bishop are both just hanging out here, they're basically the same thing. All right. So if we analyze the situation where the knight goes where the king should be, what we now has, have is three soldiers left, 
and three spots for them, and none can go in their own spots. So this is the same problem that we started with, except instead of five soldiers, we have three. So if we call the total number of derangements with five soldiers, d5, the total number of derangements when the king has gone here and the knight has gone here is d3. Now we analyze the situation where the knight is going to choose one of these three spots, but we don't say which one. We just say, the knight's, it's the knight's turn, he has three places to choose from. Well, this is actually um, a situation that we've already looked at as well. Uh, when we began, we started with five pieces. The king was going, and he could choose from four spots. Well, now, we have four pieces. The knight's going, and he can choose from three spots. So it's the same scenario, except that we've reduced the number by one. So the number of ways that we can go now, with the knight going in any of these three spots, is d4, number of derangements of four pieces. All told, that means when the king goes in the ninth spot, and uh, the knight goes next, um, we have d3 plus d4 possibilities. d3 from the knight going here, d4 from the knight going wherever else that it wants. And we've almost counted the number of arrangements d5, at least related it to smaller numbers of derangements, except that we said the king goes where the knight goes. Uh, but there was no particular reason for that. He could have gone in any of the other four spots, so we need to multiply by four. So our result is that d5 equals four times the quantity d3 plus d4. Now you may not think that we've solved it, uh, because we don't know what d3 and d4 is, are. Um, but it's easy to solve um, d2, for example. d2 is one. If there's two pieces, the king and the queen, they can only go in the wrong spots one way. Right? Um, and d1 is zero. If there's only one piece, there's no way to get him in the wrong spot. Um, so if we have a recursion relation, which tells us dn, in our case d5, in terms of the two next ones, uh, d4 and d3, then we can work our way up. Um, so um, our formula, to remind you, is dn is equal to n minus 1 times dn minus 1 plus dn minus 2. N minus 1 was the number of places that the first guy could choose from, because he can't choose his own. There would have been N otherwise. And dn minus 1 um, plus dn minus 2 was what we worked out with for the total number of choices once he's picked his spot. So that's the recursion relation.